We've got two very polarizing things to talk about today. So let the fights begin. <laughs> Well, hello. Thanks for tuning into Mailbag Monday. My name is Mike K. And I'm Marty. If you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email. I would love to hear from you. K8MRD at iCloud.com. Uh, this one's going to be a doozy. I expect to uh, have a lot of interesting comments on this one, but let's dive into the first question here. And this viewer is asking what radio to buy. He goes on to say, my dilemma is really about purchasing decision, either the ICOM 7300 or the Asu FTDX10. From a technical disposition, I understand the pros and cons very well. And honestly, I'm not really confused by the nuances of technology between the two. As well, I fully comprehend the positioning of both radios on the Sherwood receiver test data, etc. His use case is for uh, portable and for POTA, not adverse to putting it in a case. He goes on to say, but as a new ham with no experience with either radio, I'm soliciting your opinion on usability and operating. I've watched countless videos with regard to usability, menu systems, controls, knobs, etc. Is there a trade-off between receiver capabilities such as DNR, various filtering, etc., weighted more than accessing features on the fly? In every part of my research, I get the sense that the FTDX10 can be a bitch to rapidly maneuver around, while the 7300 is pretty straightforward, and what you see is what you get. Again, I've never operated either radio, so there are no habits or radio-specific nuances to break, uh, to break like there could be if I were moving from one platform to the other. Regards, Wayne. Thank you, Wayne, for writing in. So the big question here is, is the trade-off between receiver capabilities weighted more than quickly accessing those features. Now, I've been very vocal about my dislike of Yesu's menus. Their radios are fantastic. It's just a navigation thing, similar to why I gravitated uh, around 2010, 2012 to the Apple universe. I just find their user interface more streamlined than I do Windows and Android. So. That is why I prefer ICOM radios. They're just historically have been very easy to navigate. All of their radios, whether whether I, if you're familiar with a 705, if I put a 7300 in your hands, you would instantly be familiar with that. Same as with uh, the 7100, the 7610, and even probably the 7851. They're very consistent across the platforms. Yesu has not been consistent at all. They pretty much come up with a new user interface for every single radio they make up until recently. I think Yesu's made great strides in improving their user interface to be easier to navigate while also not just copy ICOM's interface. Now, I don't have nearly the experience with the FTDX10 or the FT710, but I have some. My most recent experience was with the FT710 when I was at uh, the solar eclipse uh, gathering that we did. Uh, Renee 6, KR5SIX, just got an FT710, and I was able to help her kind of figure out the layout of the land of that radio. And in general, some of the more quickly needed to access type features were easier to access in that menu. Now, I believe the 710 and the FTDX10 now have, uh, if not exactly the same, a very similar menu setup. So I think Yesu is starting to pick up on that and make their radios more consistent across the line. But in all reality, Let's go back to my Yesu FT891. I harp all the time. One of the, one of the most useful features is simply power. And they buried the power way down in like menu 16. And then there's four different menus for power. On the newer radios, simple features like that are, are more easily accessed. You still, I think, I think those radios still have kind of a bigger menu if you start going deeper into it but they've streamlined it a lot. And even with the FTM 300 VHF UHF radio that I have in my car, I'm gonna be honest, I absolutely hated that radio when I first unboxed it and started using it. I was ready to sell it right off the bat. 
But once I got a little more comfortable in learning that user interface, I actually kind of like it. There's still some really dumb things they did that could be fixed in a firmware update that we will most likely never ever see, but they show promise. So from a user interface standpoint, Yesu is, has, has gotten exponentially better than before. Now, from a receiver standpoint, Yesu is way up there on the Sherwood report, especially with the new HF radios that they've made. Now, I have uh, been with like Jason and Frank, they both have FTDX 10 radios and those are kind of their main drivers for, for POTA now, where I'm using a 7300. So we've got three different radios or two different radios. We've got the FTDX 10 and the 7300 together. We're all operating together at the same time. I'm gonna tell you, the receivers on the FTDX 10 are light years better than on the 7300. But the 7300 is what, eight, nine years old now, where the FTDX 10 is, is still fairly new, still got that new radio smell, right? So I would expect it to be a better radio. The noise reduction on Yesus is something that I've always really enjoyed. And that was one of the biggest features that uh, got me to buy the 891. The noise reduction is fantastic. And when you listen to the FTDX 10, it is so nice to just sit there and operate, receive the noise. It's, it's so incredibly, it's a fantastic radio. It's so quiet on receive. Um, so honestly, you're, you're talking about a new radio versus an eight, nine year old radio between those two radios. If I were to buy one now, even though I don't really like the Yesu menu as much, even the new Yesu menu, man, it'd be really hard to not buy the FTDX 10. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a newer better radio so uh and and a lot of those functions that you got to go into the deep f menu on the yesu to get to are very very rarely needed to alter so i'm i'm kind of gonna say get the ftdx 10 and that's tough for me because because i am an icom fanboy so i hope that helps uh uh, probably the better person to ask this question would be Jason Ham Radio 2.0. So I'm calling out Ham Radio 2.0. Make a video on this. Show us what's the difference between the 710 and the 7300 from a menu standpoint and from a receiver standpoint. How's that for an answer? Next, we have a question on power and how it pertains to radios. This viewer says, hi, Mike, great videos. Thank you for sharing your experience and expertise. Well, I do have experience, expertise, eh. He says, I'll get straight to the point. I can't get a solid answer on why a 100 watt rig is better than a 20 watt rig. I've seen countless tests that show no difference in transmit quality received until you get below five watts. Also, people are working the world on 10 to 60 watts or QRP and speaker wire. They're even heard in pileups. I'm sure there is an advantage, just not sure what it is. Make it make sense. Thanks and keep the awesome videos coming, KD9QMI. So that is a very blanket question. So I'm gonna try and answer this the best I can, but understand in ham radio, there aren't always black and white answers. And a lot of times our answers are, it depends. So there's a lot to unpack here and hypothesize about, but I'm gonna assume you're trying to compare a 20 watt radio, specifically the G90, as that's the only HF 20 watt radio that I'm aware of, compared to a more high end radio like an ICOM 7300. So we're kind of comparing watts and price here. And yes, people do work the world 10 to 60 watts or QRP with a speaker wire. Speaker wire is just an antenna. My first portable antenna was a speaker wire. The KG6 HQD, God rest your soul, speaker wire antenna. I worked all over the place with it. So 
there's a lot of variables in this question and we can hypothesize a lot, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. Any radio manufacturer can fairly easily make a radio that transmits. Making a transmitter is not that difficult in the whole grand scheme of things. What really separates a radio from inexpensive to expensive or from kind of entry level to more advanced, if you wanna look at it that way, is the quality of its receiver and the feature set that that radio might give you. Power is one of the least important things in radio. Going from 20 watts to 100 watts is like 1S unit on the meter. So if you're 20 watts at the receiving end gives you an S8 from uh, the other guy hearing you, if you go to 100 watts, you'll have an S9. So it's very, very insignificant. On the other hand, if the bands aren't so great and I'm already hearing 100 watt signals pretty weak, I might not ever hear your 20 watt signal. So that extra one S unit, that 6 dB by doubling our power and then doubling it again, could be the difference between making a contact and not making a contact with your 20 watt station. So all things being equal, if we're say talking about an ICOM 7300, which is a 100 watt radio versus an ICOM 705, which is a 10 watt radio, user interface, features, notch, re uh, notch filters, noise reduction, pretty much exactly the same in there. There's not a whole heck of a lot of difference between the two. But if you start talking about radios uh, kind of more entry level that don't have as good a receiver, they don't have as good a filtering, that's where you're gonna start to notice the difference. So let's go outside and I'm gonna try to show and let you hear the difference between these two radios. Now keep in mind there's a lot of variables. I already shot this video, I've already edited this part of the video so I know what it sounds like. We are outside, we're using, you know, we're not using very high-end audio equipment to isolate what we're hearing and what I'm showing, but I think this video clip will kind of help illustrate the point between what's the difference between a G90 and a more high-end radio like a 7300. So let's go outside. So here's the setup here. We've got the 7300, we've got the Zygu G90. They're both connected with a two foot patch cable into an antenna switch. I've got on the 7300, the AGC is set to slow. The noise reduction is off. And on the G90, we've got the AGC set to slow and there is no noise reduction capability of this radio. So we're trying to keep everything uh, as consistent as possible between the two. And I've also got the bandwidth set the same here on the G90, we can see we're at 2900 and on the 7300, we are at 2900. There's also no preamps or attenuators engaged here. We can see on the 7300, everything is off. And if the preamp or attenuation were on, there would be an indicator at the top left of the screen. I'll just show you P is P amp, A is attenuation, nothing is off. So with all things being as equal as possible between these two radios, let me show you the biggest difference, which would be receive filters. The G90 has some, but watch what happens. We're gonna compare the two radios when the antenna is in line and when the antenna is not connected and listen to the receive signal and what happens when it's in and out. So right now the antenna is out of line. We hear all that noise. Let's put it in line. Really no difference. The G90 just makes a lot of noise just being on. And that's something you're gonna have to contend with when hearing signals. Now let's listen to the 7300. Noise reduction's off. The antenna's out of line. Major difference.
the 7300 just is a cleaner receive radio. But we can also turn noise reduction on or off in this radio, which we can't do with the G90 because the G90 doesn't have noise reduction. It doesn't have probably my favorite feature, a notch filter. So just listen. That noise reduction just really helps clean uh, out a lot of that noise and you can actually adjust that to whatever setting you like. I think it sounds great on four, so that's just where I leave it. Here's a guy doing a Parks on the Air on 14265. Let's listen to him on the 7300 and then we'll listen to him on the G90. A lot of times what happens when I'm using the G90 for a long period of time because it doesn't have noise reduction, all that static that you gotta hear creates what's called ear fatigue. And it's just, it's annoying to have to listen to all that static for so long. So let me turn this up, we'll listen to them with noise reduction off, and then I'll put the noise reduction on and we can hear the difference in the reduction of the background noise. Now I'll see if I can work this guy 100 watts and if we can work him on 20 watts. So we can see I've got this radio set at 100 watts and we've got the G90 set at 20 watts. Thanks so much for contact, 73. Kilo 8, Mike Romeo Delta. Uh, Roger that. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm actually making a video right now. I uh, got you 5.7 here in Texas. Would you be able, I'm on, I'm pushing 100 watts right now on a 7300. Can I switch to the G90 real quick and tell me how I sound? Yeah, no problem. Hang on, just one second. All right, this is K8MRD on the G90. How's that sound? Not very similar. It sounded very much similar to the first one. Very similar. How's the signal report? Okay, very good. Hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right, Mike. Thanks so much. 73. 73 Kate, I'm RD. So there we go. 100 watts, 20 watts. I'm 5'9", both ways to the guy, which proves power doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot. But the audio quality, the feature set, the noise reduction, the filters, the, uh, uh, what's it called, notch filter, you get so many more features when you bump up to a higher end radio than when you do with uh, a, a more affordable radio. So again, that just proved the point. Power is the least important factor, generally, in making a ham radio contact. It's more about, can we hear them? How well do we hear them? There is a whole lot more background noise on the G90 versus the 7300. But if we were to compare the G90 to things, to other QRP radios like the 705, the KX2, the KX3, things like that, those more high end ICOM, Elecraft type radios are going to have exponentially better receive filters than something like the G90 or the X5105 or God forbid the G106 or other kind of entry level. QRP radios like that. So 
I hope that answers your question. I tried to do it as scientific meth methodically. Yeah, making up new words here. As I could. Um, and hope that answers your question. They're all going to get you on the air. Okay? You're going to make contacts with all of them. It's more... How well do you hear the week, guys? And how how enjoyable is the listening experience of that radio? Guys, if you got amateur radio-related questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Thanks so much for watching another episode of Mailbag Monday. My name is Mike, K8MRD. We'll see you next time, 73.